Happy Friday, all you mentees. What better way to end the week than to take a look inside of the absolute doomsday clock from DC Comics? So, let's get started. All right. So, what we're looking at here is the latest absolute edition from DC Comics, and that is Doomsday Clock. Now, me, like everybody else that has been collecting Absolute Editions for a while, have our own list. As a matter of fact, I put one out every year of our most wanted DC Absolute Editions. Um, actually, I did take this out. This is the little leaflet that I like to keep uh, with my Absolute Editions. Uh, this is what comes inside of the plastic because this book is wrapped in plastic. Uh, this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what this is and what is collected in here. Uh, it's got the 12-issue series, the Maxi series, and then 60-plus pages of behind-the-scenes extras. Book retails for $125. As far as the design of the book, it is pretty simple. It's this black on yellow Absolute Doomsday Clock. You have the different times of the clock there. Now, why is that? And why does it look very similar to... The designs of this. This is Absolute Watchmen. Now, of course, this is my first printing. Not sure if later printings, if the book itself had a dust jacket or not. But this is kind of the way that it's going to look on your shelf. And my gosh, that just looks amazing together. Of course, Watchmen has a little more of a design than Doomsday Clock. So I am going to be answering the question, what exactly is Doomsday Clock? Is it really a sequel to Watchmen? Is it a follow-up to the New 52 Rebirth? Or is it the greatest Superman story? Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at this together. But before I do, uh, let's take this out of the dust or slipcase. I also wanted to take Watchmen out of its slipcase. Like I said, I have the very first printing. And see what I mean? I'm so... I'm silly. I keep all these stupid little leaflets. Uh, this one, yeah, the first printing was $75. Hmm. I wonder um, how much the latest printing is. But it did come with a dust jacket, too. And this is kind of what the books look like together. Of course, Doomsday Clock does not have a dust jacket. And Absolute Watchmen is one of the books that I own in my library. I did a book or a video of... Uh, the books that I've read the most in my library, and Absolute Watchmen is just one of them, because I love the book. I, I love the story in here. Uh, and fear not, this does have a ribbon. It's just that this has been thoroughly read and loved. Maybe I need to upgrade my copy. All right, so before I open this up, before I get to look at the artwork, before we talk about the stories in here, there are some big spoilers. And it kicks it off with issue number one, and I'm talking about spoilers for Watchmen. As a matter of fact, I strongly suggest, before reading this, to read Watchmen. Don't watch the movie, don't watch the TV show, and then expect to jump in here and understanding everything. Uh, because there are aspects of Watchmen that are so important and crucial to the story in here that I feel like you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not reading Watchmen before uh, reading this book. So just as a fair warning, there are going to be some spoilers, especially about the ending of Watchmen. So if you've never read it, I know the book is from the 1980s, 1985, 86, but there are people that have never read it, so I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Just in case, spoilers, going into this. Uh, I will be talking about the first issue in here. I'm going to be talking about some spoilers in here. Not very much, not, not really what happens, but really what the basis of the story is, what the premise is. So, just in case, even putting me on mute is going to spoil things that happen in Watchmen, okay? Last warning, I know I sound ridiculous doing this, especially when I'm under medication <laughs> for being sick for the last week, uh, but I do like to stress the fact that I don't like spoiling things for people, even if the damn book was written in 1985, and it feels so weird saying that, because that wasn't, to me, that feels just like yesterday. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's crack this open. We have some black end paper. Uh, the book retails for $125, and it has 496 pages. So you have Absolute Doomsday Clock there, the design, 
Again, Watchmen created by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons, Superman created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, and special arrangement with Jerry Siegel family. Uh, that means there might be a couple of characters here that appear not just from Superman, but Superboy, Legion Superheroes, and all that. Uh, I love this dedication right here for Len Wein. And then, this is really interesting because this actually talks about the actual Doomsday Clock right here. This paragraph talks about what the real Doomsday Clock is, not the comic book version. And then what it could have ties to in the comics. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, here's all the credits. Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, Brad Anderson, Rob Lee. Um, those are the original creators of this. And then you have the original issue, Back Matter Design. That's Amy Brockway Met uh, Metcalf. And then Gary Frank and Brad Anderson doing the collection cover. So the end is here. This is how it all kicks off. So very similar to the way that Watchmen, the original Watchmen, kicks off. This kicks off the same way with the cover. And then the first panel, of course, either zooming in or zooming out from that very cover. Very similar to the way that Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons did on the original Watchmen. I realize I keep saying original Watchmen because there's only one Watchmen. I think I've made it pretty clear on my channel in the past that to me, Watchmen is just one of those stories that doesn't need a sequel, doesn't need a movie adaptation, doesn't need a cartoon, a TV show sequel, a before Watchmen series. It needs to be left alone. So as I was reading the series when it was coming out, because it was very important. I mean, this series came out in 2017. Um, it was supposed to be a year-long series. It was supposed to start in December 2017 and then end by December 2018. It was delay after delay that decided to take some breaks in between. And sure enough, the series finally concluded two years later on December of 2019. So maybe it was in delays or maybe it's because I'm heavily medicated. <laughs> but holy crap, did I enjoy this a lot more. Yeah, I'm so ready to talk about this. All right, again, some spoilers, of course, of Watchmen and then some spoilers of the first issue here. Uh, very minor spoilers here, just kind of giving you the premise of what this is about. So this all kicks off in the world of Watchmen. It is seven years, so we're looking in the early 90s right now, since the Great Lie or the big, big destruction of New York City, which, of course, um, that's what they're calling. The newspapers are calling the Great Lie. It's... Pretty much the ending of Watchmen, where Adrian Vate, uh, Ozymandias, tricked the world into thinking there was an alien invasion by dumping this big octopus creature that he was building with a bunch of scientists in the middle of New York to unite the world. That was his idea. Okay, the world is fighting. They're on always on the edge, and there's about to be a nuclear war. How do we make everybody work together? Alien invasion. And that's, I mean, that's, that's why I... I I had to talk about the ending of Watchmen. So this does acknowledge the fact that that took place. So we are talking about an actual sequel to Watchmen. As much as I hated that idea, it happened. But it's Jeff Johns. He's one of my favorite creators. So again, this takes place years later. We're looking in 1992. Again, seven years after the big massacre in New York City. And Adrian Vate's plan for world peace unfortunately failed. Because instead of uniting the world, the world again has become on the edge they don't trust each other political parties are using this big disaster to kind of drive their own purposes so adrian has become the most wanted man because if you remember in watchmen rorschach the character of rorschach kept a journal and that journal was sent to the press and the press let it out there and he wrote everything down including adrian's plan so everyone knows about this big massive attack on New York City, and it was all created by Ozymandias, once a hero, now the most wanted man in the world. And speaking of Rorschach, who the hell is this guy? You read Watchmen. Immediately, you're like, wait a freaking minute. Rorschach died. What's going on? Well, believe me, everything will be answered. Is this a different Rorschach? Is it the reincarnation of Rorschach? Is it the son of the original Rorschach? He is a different character, I will say, than the character that appears in Tom King's book, Rorschach. Okay, I think without going into that spoilers of that book, that book has really very little to do with this. As a matter of fact, that book has more to do with the TV show than this. 
So Rorschach is going into a prison, this Rorschach, and that's what we're going to call him because that's who uh, he calls himself. He speaks in broken English, which is very interesting. And not that the original Rorschach had the most profound uh, dialogue, but you can tell that maybe this guy isn't all there or maybe some maybe brain damage happened to him. And so it could be the original Rorschach or it could be a brand new character. But his whole mission is to break out these two characters from prison. Uh, these are the characters of Marionette and Mime. Now, what's very interesting about those characters is that they were original Charleston characters. Of course, they have been modernized, but modernized not for our time, modernized for like 1980s Dave Gibbons type of artwork time. So I thought that was really cool because the original idea of Watchmen, of course, was to take some of the Charlton characters like Blue Beetle, Captain Adam, bring them into the DC universe. And then Alan Moore said, there's always different stories going around about how this happened. Whether the editors said, whoa, this story's too good for Blue Beetle and Captain Adam. Uh, make your own characters. Or whether Alan Moore was like, you know what? No, I'm going to make my own characters. So hence Night Owl, hence Awesome and Deus, and Dr. Manhattan. So... That's what they did with these. These two characters were original Charlton characters. And those two characters actually appeared in the pages of Tom King's um, Batman run. What was their names? Uh, Ju Julie and... Oh, man. What was the guy's name? Uh, but anyway, this is like their uh, Watchmen counterparts. So he's there to break them out of prison. He's working with somebody. He's like, you guys got to come with me. You got to meet my partner. And sure enough, he successfully breaks them out of prison. They get into the owl ship. So in your head, as you're reading this, you're like, oh, he's partnered with Night Owl. This is going to be awesome. But lo and behold, it's not Night Owl that comes out of the shadows, but Ozymandias. Now it gets really confusing because you're like, why in the hell is Rorschach teaming up with Ozymandias? It doesn't make any sense. This can't be the original Rorschach. Everything gets answered. Now, the plan is that he feels guilt. So Ozymandias feels guilt for everything that happened. He feels like the plan went wrong. Uh, it could have been done better. So to fix everything, they have to find John. They have to find Dr. Manhattan. And that is the plan. Now, everything so far has had to do with the Watchmen universe. So why is Superman on the cover of the slipcase? Why have you seen advertisement with Superman in the clock? Well, now we make it to Metropolis, where Superman, for the first time ever, according to him, is having a nightmare. And a little bit of spoilers here. Uh, man, I swear, this is hard to talk about without going into a little bit of history. Uh, a little bit of spoilers, but in the New 52 universe, when Superman's origin was redone, his parents died in a car accident. So unlike the pre-New 52 era, so after Flashpoint and Rebirth, I guess, because it's still kind of the same origin, uh, his parents died in a car accident, and that's what he's reliving through this nightmare. He's reliving the time that his parents died, and Lois is holding him like, what's going on? So the basic premise of this is like, we got to set the world right. We have to set this entire multiverse right, because now characters are finding out about the multiverse where dr manhattan has been hiding and again i love the way that this kicks off there are extras in after every issue all the back matter stuff is here just like the first original comic i keep going to original watchmen but not so much a prose or the the pirate comics but more like news articles and clippings and menus and things like that it's a lot easier to read now i say a lot easier to read but holy crap, this does feel like a sequel to Watchmen in the sense that it's also dialogue heavy. You will take some time to read this. I read, I reread this. Um, so yeah, a little bit of background. I, I was a little bit sick this week. I came back from the con. This video was supposed to come out. Oh my gosh, early this week. But it did give me time to read. And oh my gosh, I read this in a day. Now, <laughs> again, I was heavily medicated. Now, there's a lot more complexity than that. That was just the first issue I talked about. There are things in here to tie to the Legion of Superheroes. There are things in here to tie to the JSA. And at the end of the day, it, it's like you, you ask yourself a question. What, what am I reading about? What is this about? By the time you get to the final issue, the answer has been there all along. And when you get to the answer, it brought a smile to my face. Because the answer is all about hope. 
because the story is really that no matter how cynical we get, uh, this is some of the stuff, the back matter that they added, by the way. I love this stuff. Uh, no matter how bad things get, no matter how much hope we've lost, there is always a beacon of light. There is something always to look forward to if you look in the right place, Ribbon. I love that message. Like, it, it inspires so much hope. And it all starts, you know, in, in 1938. And, oh, and, and, and how it all comes together. It's so hard to talk about this without uh, going into a deep dive. But reading this as it was coming out, and then I, get, I think I read it again in trade paper. Or no, I read volume two in trade paperback because I didn't wrap it up because I just didn't care. You know, it, it felt like, um, yeah, it was okay. I feel like, again, we don't need a sequel to Watchmen. Reading it now felt like one of the most important, if not the most important Superman stories ever. Because the message is so in your face that you can't deny the importance of Superman in the DC Universe. Without Superman, there is no Wonder Woman, there is no Batman, there is no Justice Society, there's no, there's no DC Comics. And Jeff Johns loves Superman, and you can tell. I mean, anytime he's ever written a big event, right, Superman is always in the middle of it. And in here, the answer is so wonderful. Oh, man, oh, and, and, and the freaking dialogue. You know, I don't care what you did in the past. What matters is what you choose to do from now on. Oh, dude, that hit me hard. I was, damn, that is such a good and powerful line. Uh, that's from the last issue. And right now, I'm just flipping through pages that don't really have that much spoilers in them. I mean, a little bit. You get to see, of course, Black Adam show up. But just showcasing the wonderful artwork here by Gary Frank. Who, yes, is a lot more detailed than Dave Gibbons, you know. Little more stylized, but it's just good to see somebody like him drawing this. I think it, he's the perfect person to have drawn this. And as much as I would have loved to have seen Dave Gibbons return for this book, I think... Gary Frank, working with Jeff Johns, gives this book its own identity. Now, I think Jeff Johns has been on the record. Or look at my boy Guy Garden not giving up no matter what he is punching. Um, for saying that this is a standalone story. Respectfully disagree. Him being one of my favorite creators. But I no, this is not. This serves to me as a sequel to not just Watchmen, but also the New 52 and Rebirth era. This, to me, is kind of the bookend to the Rebirth era, which gives us a new beginning. Now, it gets a little bit confusing because DC Editorial did not agree with that. Apparently, there was some big behind-the-scenes drama where it was either Scott Snyder's Dark Knight's Metal or it was Doomsday Clock. That's how we're going to revamp the universe and move forward with DC. So... I think most of the DC editorial decided, hey, let's do Dark Knight's Metal. Whereas this book ends in a really hopeful, like, oh, everything's going to be all right. Dark Knight's Metal. I mean, need I say more? But still an enjoyable story, Dark Knight's. Um, let's go back towards the beginning because I don't want to spoil what happened in the big fights here. So there are twists here, left and right, not just with characters you expect to show up, but also with some of the flashbacks to how these characters got there, how the this particular Rorschach got into the footsteps of Rorschach. Like, I'm being as vague as possible without spoiling things. And I, I think it's a very enjoyable read. I think this time around, it reads so much better if I'm just reading it from cover to cover. And I'm not telling everybody to read this in one day. You will t need breaks because, like I said, it's dialogue heavy. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's wonderful and beautiful action sequences through here. But there's a lot of heavy reading that you'll do through these particular pages. Now, let's look at the extras. So all the way in the back here is the cover gallery, the sketchbook. Uh, these are the variant covers right here. So this is what I mean. Like, I'm sure most people saw this house. At, and when I was talking about the Watchmen universe, most people were like, where the hell is Superman? This Lex play an important part? You damn right he does. Where's Batman been? I haven't even talked about Batman. Believe me, he's in there. There's Rorschach. Wait, Joker? Joker always plays an important part. And there's the characters of Mime and Marionette. Speaking of Marionettes. And there's Dr. Manhattan. Uh, what does this mean? Oh, dude. 
everything's going to be all right. Uh, these are the trade paperback covers, I believe. No, the hardcover collected editions. That's They had a little box set, like a slipcase box set. The pencils here for the covers. Uh, the designs for the characters. This is who I was talking about. It was Punch. That was his name. And Julie. Uh, characters from Charleston. And when DC bought the properties, uh, they kind of went away. But they did, like I said, show up in Tom King's run. And this is their versions in the Watchmen universe. According to Jeff Johns and Gary Frank of Mime and Marionette. And Marionette went through some... <laughs> lots of designs... There's Batman. I love the detail right here. Fabric bunching at joints. Oh, I love that subtle knuckle duster. Very nice. This is the back matter stuff. Behind the scenes, what all this means. Not going to go into details because some of it spoils some things that are in this particular volume right here. And the process to some of the behind the scenes. It was nice to see some obscure characters. That's the thing I love about Jeff Johns, too, is that he throws in some obscure characters in most of his stories. You gotta give him credit for that. Char uh, characters I didn't think anybody cared about, like Crimson Fox. Now, this picture, which is right here, plays a huge important part. So much so... Uh, here's some original page art right here. Which, uh, this is the first issue, so that's okay. So much so that there is, this is at the very end, this fell out of my slipcase. Uh, there is a copy of the picture. And who are these two people? Well, I can't turn it to the back. I'm pretty sure if you read Watchmen, you know who these two people are. It's, it's on the freaking cover of one of the issues. Uh, but here are your credits. Jeff John. Oh, I'm sorry, the bio. Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, and Brad Anderson. And as far as the binding, again, there is a ribbon. It is sewn binding, and there's that eye. Now, the paper quality in this, and it's probably because I just got out my Watchmen, is different than Watchmen. Watchmen used a matte paper, a thick matte paper. This uses a thick, glossy paper. Again, love the idea that they do that with the original Watchmen, and here with Doomsday Clock. Zooming out. Ah, love that. Uh, but yes, thick, glossy paper. Kind of what they've used in the past with their other Absolute Editions. Unless you're looking at things like the Tim Cell and Jeff Loeb Batman books, which uses the matte paper. But that's it. Maybe I need to do a video on a deep dive, a live video where you all can join me to talk about this. Because I, holy crap, I enjoyed this. And now it has become one of my favorite Superman stories. Spoilers. There, I said what I said. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in buying and pre-ordering Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC books within the EU, flat rate shipping of 12 euro for all EU countries, bulletproof packaging, and all emails will be answered within 24 hours. They offer a huge selection of out-of-print books. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word at the checkout, to get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order of over 40 euros. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. This episode is brought to you by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this Absolute Edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you have picked this up, if you read the story, what you thought about the story. Am I crazy? Am I still on medication? Am I crazy? Or did rereading this all in one sit-through just make this such an awesome experience? Or it could be the medication that I'm on. Uh, but anyway, I loved it this time around. I'd love to know your thoughts. Any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe. Check out our other videos. We have different playlists. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Especially healthy. During this time, there's a lot of flu going around. Uh, much love. <laughs>